Leaf drop on a rubber tree houseplant is a pretty common issue you're probably facing and an issue I get loads of comments about in my videos. If you're suffering with this problem, then fear not. Diagnosing why this happens is fairly straightforward so long as you know what signs to look out for and understand what the plant needs. And I'm gonna go over exactly that in this video so that you can have a rubber tree to be proud of in your home. And we're still gaining on Plant Arena, so make sure you hit the subscribe button. Improper watering of your rubber tree will result in leaf drop and is probably the number one cause of this common problem. It goes without saying that this plant does not like being either underwatered or overwatered and one of the first signs this is happening is leaf drop. Let's talk about overwatering. What does it actually mean? Overwatering simply means that you're giving the plant too much water for its needs. To understand this though, we need to understand what rubber trees like. The rubber tree is part of the ficus family. His brothers and sisters include the ficus benjamina and the very popular fiddle leaf fig. And pretty much all ficus plants do not like to have soggy soil and the rubber tree is no different. So if you are watering this plant on a weekly schedule, say every Saturday, and not letting the soil to dry out in between watering, then you're probably overwatering the plant and it will drop some leaves. I feel like I go on like a broken record on this channel, but I always, always advise to check the soil of the plant before watering by sticking your finger into the soil or using a moisture meter. It's especially important here. Don't be shy and stick your finger in a couple of inches into the soil. The plant won't mind, I promise. If you feel moisture, then simply wait another few days and then check again. The soil will be wetter the lower down the pot you go. So if the top two inches are wet, then it definitely has enough moisture in the pot. And my favorite plant accessory is the humble moisture meter. And if you've got one, then that's even better. This will tell you exactly how wet the soil is so please only water when your pro breeze dry, your rubber tree's life depends on it. If you haven't got a moisture meter, then check out my Amazon page linked in the description of this video to see the one that I use. Trust me, it's a real game changer. Ficus plants really do need to dry out in between watering. Keeping the roots consistently wet will result in root rot and eventual plant death. It's this constant wetness that does the damage and not the quantity of water you give it when you do come to water it. You can merrily pour water over the top as much as you want, as long as you let it dry out before you do so again. And as a rule of thumb, I tend to water my rubber tree once every two weeks in the spring and summer, and once a month during the winter, but it really does depend on your climate. If you're in sunny California, then you probably need to water a little more frequently due to the warmer year round temps. I live in gloomy Sheffield, so it takes an age for my plants to dry out. To identify if you've been overwatering your plant, you should check the soil of the plant to see how soggy it is, but the leaves will also paint a pretty clear picture. Do they feel limp and mushy? Do they fall off the plant when you touch them? These symptoms mean the roots of the plant are pushing too much water to the leaf tissue and rotting the leaves from the inside, turning them mushy until they fall off. This leaf drop will affect the lower leaves first and will gradually move up the plant until you're left with a bare central stem. If the leaves are turning yellow with brown tips and then falling off, then this should be ringing alarm bells. This happens because the leaf cells are literally bursting from too much water in the leaf cells, weakening them until they fall off. Underwatering your rubber plant puts it through stress and this can also cause the leaves of your plant to drop off. Here, the plant is going into survival mode and shedding its leaves to conserve moisture because you're not giving it enough. Plants perspire water through the leaves, much like we perspire sweat through our armpits and other places. The more leaves a plant has, the more it will perspire and if the plant is not getting enough water to support its growth, it will shed some leaves to conserve the water it has for survival. This plant generally prefers a drier soil to something like a peace lily, but it is important to not go too far and keep the soil dry for weeks at a time, especially if your house is warm and you have it placed in a sunny spot. This can damage the roots long term because you're repeatedly putting the plant through periods of drought. When a plant is stressed, normally throws a strop and drops a leaf or two. The signs of underwatering are pretty obvious to most folks. It will have a droopy appearance and a general look that it wants to give up. And the rubber plant suffers this more than most other plants. 
Once a leaf droops, it's very hard to get it to bounce back. If you have neglected your plant for a long time and it's looking sorry for itself, then a good drink should bring it somewhat back to life. But don't be too surprised if you still have a few droopy leaves and lose a few leaves in the process. Like I said, this process will start on the lowest leaf first. And unfortunately, there's no easy way to get leaves to regrow on this part of the plant. The roots of a rubber tree are like the foundations to the plant. We all know that if the foundations to our house are not sound, then we won't be having too many Christmases in that house. So if the roots are in poor health, so will the foliage be. A root bound rubber tree will mean that the plant is not getting sufficient water and vital nutrients to feed its growth this usually eventually leads to leaf drop. I know it can be a real bind to check the roots of your plants every year, but this is one of the most important things you can do. I normally set aside an afternoon in spring and check all my plants at once, and then the job is done for that year. You'd be surprised at how many of your plants are root bound. I check and repot my house plants every spring, or at least every other spring to give the roots the chance to spread out into the pot during the growing season. And the best way to tell if your rubber tree is root bound is to take the plant out of the pot and inspect the roots. Rubber trees don't tend to mind being a little bit root bound. You can expect to see some roots in the pot. Don't panic at the first sign of a root and that pot into a larger container. So it'll be probably be too soon. It's when the roots of the plant significantly outweigh the amount of soil in the pot it needs to be potted up into a pot one or two sizes bigger. Soil is much better at retaining moisture than roots. The soil retains the moisture and keeps the roots of the plant moist, which allows it to push out new growth. If there isn't enough soil in the pot, then the roots drink the water you give it pretty much straight away, and it needs to be watered again soon. Ficus plants like lots of indirect sunlight and rubber trees are no different. Leaf drop can be a sign that your rubber tree is not getting enough light. I find that this plant can even tolerate a few hours of morning sun each day, which is what my one gets. I have mine in front of my east facing dining room window. So on the rare occasions, we're lucky enough to get some sun here in Sheffield. It gets about four hours or five hours of direct sun on those days. And don't get me wrong, this will be entirely dependent on your climate. Like I say, Sheffield isn't the hottest city in the world, so the morning sun doesn't get so strong that it scorches the leaves of my plants. Keep this plant in a spot that gets little natural light though, and it really won't be happy, and you may be seeing some leaf drop. This is particularly true if you're watering your plant weekly and have it in a dark spot. Rubber trees perspire water when they grow vigorously in a bright spot, so keeping yours in the dark will spell trouble for it. You will need to wait longer between watering your plant than if you had it on a south facing window where it gets lots of sun. Blindly water weekly and you'll essentially be overwatering your plant, which comes with all the problems that I mentioned earlier. If you do have your plant in a warm spot in your home, then you'll need to be mindful of how often you are watering the plant to prevent it from drying out and dropping some leaves. But never make assumptions about your plant though, Always check the soil with your moisture meter before watering, no matter where it is in your home. There might not always be something wrong with your plant when you see some leaf drop, and it could just simply be a symptom of its age. Your rubber tree grows in a vertical line, normally with a single central stem, and it will focus all its energy at the top where it's pushing out new growth. This naturally means that it gives less energy to the leaves lower down the plant naturally weakening them until they fall off. You can think of this as survival of the fittest in a way. This is a natural process for lots of plants as they get older and not always something to panic about. I bought my rubber tree as a relatively young plant from Ikea and as it's getting older and bigger, it sometimes loses the lowest leaf. I know this is par for the course because I have it in a bright spot. I use my moisture meter to check the soil before watering and I'm pretty sure my plant is not plagued by pests and disease. And speaking of pests, if you're watering your plant correctly and have it in a bright spot in your home, and you're still seeing some leaf drop, then something more sinister may be happening. Pests are a surprisingly common problem for house plants, but unfortunately for most plant parents, ignorance is bliss. For the longest time, I just didn't want to believe that there could be any bugs on my plant, so I didn't really bother checking them. That was until I lost a croton to spider mites. So pests are a very real problem and a potential reason your rubber tree could be losing some leaves 
So we need to rule out the major players. Spider mites are tiny arachnids that live on and munch away at the leaf tissue of houseplants. They are crafty little buggers because they're too small to see with the naked eye. So they go largely unnoticed until we start to notice that our plant is dying. Sadly though, at this point, the population has grown out of control and have essentially taken over the plant sucking the sap from the leaves in the process. This weakens the plant and it starts to drop leaves. So give your rubber tree a thorough check over. Can you see any spotting on the leaves? Can you see any fine webbing on the stems and underside of the leaves? The webbing is the biggest giveaway. You need to look very closely with a light. But if you do notice these things, then you have a spider mite problem. Spider mites hate moisture. So the remedy is to hose the plant down and treat with an insecticide to stop them coming back. Spider mites aren't the only pest. If you've got what looks like little blobs of cotton on the stems and leaves, then I'm afraid you've got mealybugs, which you can treat by dabbing them with rubbing alcohol. Another test for bugs is to shake the foliage over a white sheet of paper and check to see if there are any tiny black specks moving around. If this is the case, then you probably have frips, the most annoying and dangerous pest to houseplants going. And for more info on this, and how to get rid of them, check out my full pest guide that you can watch by clicking on the link here.